Hi Taurus and welcome to your monthly tarot reading for July. Thank you so much for joining and this is a general reading uh, for any sun, moon, or rising Taurus sign. Okay, so we, we begin with the star. And the star, as you see in this illustration, we see this uh, woman here without her clothes on who is pouring water into a pond. And she's also pouring water onto the soil here. And, you know, often there are times that that it calls for us to be vulnerable and to let our guard down. And I think with the star, that's a, a, um, a suggestion perhaps. The star is a wonderfully positive card because it's about optimism. It's about having hope for your situation. It's not so much acting or the doing things of, of um, getting to a better place, but it's really the, um, the belief and the faith in yourself of uh, good times that will come to you eventually. This is a card that encourages you to take some time for yourself to feel a sense of re rest restoration, of recovering, of healing, of, uh, you know, take yourself to a spa, go for a walk, take some yoga classes, do something that's going to let you relax and connect and marry your physical and your spiritual selves. And, you know, that's going to benefit you in July. This is a card of hope and optimism that things get better. You believe it. You've had maybe some rough times in the past couple months, and this is an indication that things are going to get better. Be vulnerable, be open, and let yourself heal. You also have the Eight of Wands. And with the Eight of Wands, there are a couple things that could be happening. As you see, you have the wands hurtling in air. They're probably headed towards Earth. So, you know, they're in the downward trend. And that means that perhaps there are projects that you're working on that could be coming to a close. Um, you know, maybe it's been uh, things are up in the air, but maybe uh, you're coming to a decision. Very simply, it could be that you're getting news, that you're going to be getting news on something in your life, whether it's your career, your family, an opportunity, but news is coming your way. And then when we see the Eight of Wands, it can typically mean that, uh, you know, you've got a lot of things going on, that you're busy, that there's a lot of activity for you. And so that's why that's interesting with the star card here is with the Eight of Wands, there's news and perhaps, you know, um, as a result of this news, it would be a good thing to recover and to relax. As we move on through, through the month, oh my goodness, okay. We have this beautiful judgment card. And the Judgment card is the 20th card of the Major Arcana. And so it's almost at the end, but it's not the end. The, the final card of the Major Arcana is the world. And the Judgment comes before it. Because really, it's a sense of a day of reckoning. And so you may be thinking to yourself or contemplating you know, how have I, how, how are things going in my life? Am I on the right track? Am I doing what I hope to be doing? You know, am I living a purposeful life, a good life of service? Am I kind to others? But it's really a sense of, of taking a look at where you are and perhaps wanting to change directions. Wanting to change directions. You could see the little people here, the beings are rising out of their coffins and they're looking toward the angel and the angel has the fanfare and is, is, it's like announcing their arrival, their rebirth. This card is thought of as rebirth. And so, you know, this is a question that you can ask yourself. Do you have the, uh, do you have the desire or the, the core 
belief that, that you want to change things and to move in a diff different direction that will, um, you know, meet your ultimate goal, your ultimate purpose. You know, have you, are you still writing your story? This is what the judgment card is about. Have I lived a good life? Have I been good to my family? Kind of like taking stock of your life and looking at it closely. And then along with that judgment card of taking stock, we have the Ten of Cups. And this is a beautiful card because this is about family and about wanting it all. The family, children, a beautiful, loving community. And you can see this family, they're just waving at the cups, the rainbow, the cups and the rainbow in the sky, representing abundance. It's really kind of like hitting the the jackpot if your if your wish is to have a family and to have all of the beautiful deep love that goes on with with having a family and children and a lifelong partner so this is a happy card so that perhaps within july you're going to have time to celebrate with your family to spend uh, time with your children, your nephews, your cousins, your brothers or sisters, whomever. But this is a card where you are celebrating your abundance and your gift of having a good life. So in the early part of July, there's a lot of thinking and restorative practices, perhaps, um, with some news. And then something is going to uh, trouble you. Something is going to make you feel blocked, make you feel shut down. You can see this woman here is standing. She is blindfolded. She is wrapped up with some ties here, lightly tied, I would say, and standing before these swords. This is the Eight of Swords. And you know, uh, she really doesn't want to face the truth, perhaps, on something. Or there's been an emotion, emotional situation in your life where you are wanting to just uh, not face it and block it out. Because maybe it's too painful to have to, to deal with. The interesting thing, if you look closely at this card, is that if she wanted to, she could step out of, these, of this little uh, place that she's standing. She is not tied to it, to it where it really would be difficult for her to be able to, to have to leave. So this is a choice that when you're ready, perhaps, that you will face whatever's making you feel uncomfortable, whatever's making you feel perhaps sad or down or disappointed, that this is a card of feeling a little bit of um, grief and feeling stuck and trapped, trapped within a situation. You do have the power to get out of the situation. You know, you hold that energy and that power to do so. You just have to come to the right time to make the move. And that being blocked and feeling trapped and sad kind of um, is reinforced by this moon card, which we can see the moon shining here and the towers on the side and with the crawfish and the wolf and the dog. And the, the moon is about something that is uh, uncertain for you. Maybe there's some, someone's having secrets or keeping secrets, but you are feeling perhaps confused or a little bit lost at some point in July. Something will be um, just making you question Question your own intuition. And, you know, when you see the moon card, it would be a good opportunity for you to check in on your, on your inner sense and your inner guide, on your dreams. Listen to your intuition. Often, uh, sometimes we don't listen or pay careful attention to what our gut tells us to do. And this would be a situation perhaps where you want to, to do that. Because sometimes if we trust our first instinct, that was the right instinct. So, you know, the moon shines the way 
but can also, uh, you know, fool us. So how do we get to the, where we want to go? You know, we have to find some solution or f find some strategy to move us forward and um, to, uh, to think about the fears, the uncertainty, the limiting beliefs that are keeping us from making progress. I think that after you get through this little stage right here, that things improve. We have the lover's card. And this lover's card, as you can see, the two lovers are right below the, the angel. And this is a card where if you are in a relationship, this is a meaningful and authentic and deep relationship that has may very well have legs and uh, power to stand up for a long time. So often with the lover's card, it comes down to the two of you thinking about making decisions or plans. What will your plans be? Are you going to get engaged? Are you going to move in? Are you going to become exclusive? But the lovers begs the questions that, that people who are connected, soulmates, twin flames, whatever they may be, that they, these questions come up with, where are we headed with this? Where are we going? Maybe, you know, you may be thinking, well, maybe this isn't quite what I was looking for and I'm going to have to do something else. But, you know, I feel that this is a favorable card for you that you're going to meet someone that could be a great choice, someone that's going to make you happy and feel uh, fulfilled with, because that's the lovers. It's about passion, intimacy, and desire. And, uh, you know, it's the relationship where you finish someone else's sentences, you know what they're going to say, and it's just this ease of being together and the delight and the joy of being with someone else in a relationship. You know, and along with that, we have the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune tells us about life, the, the cycle of life. The wheel is always moving and always spinning. And probably right now for you, you know, things are going very well. And that you are in a good phase of this spinning wheel of fortune. You know, events and things happen randomly sometimes. They can be positive or negative. Uh, I think that this, for you, upright position that you are in a positive place, and perhaps with family, with the, the theme of family, serious love, ten of cups, wheel of fortune. Um... Often people may say that this is a card of fate, of destiny. Maybe your destiny is meeting someone. But remember, don't leave your life's uh, work just to chance and just to destiny. You are in control and it's your beliefs, how you visualize, how you live that can send you in the path that, that the universe wants you to go. So don't release your power or just say, well, that's just, you know, that's just what's happening. You know, I, don't, I can't do anything about it because more often than not, you can do something about it. But with these two cards in tandem here, the Wheel of Fortune and the Lovers, this and with the Ten of Cups, this is the potential for a strong relationship and for those that are single, and if you're wanting a relationship, you have to keep your eyes open and your ears open, and you have to make an effort to try to meet people. And the more people that you meet, the more opportunities you have to connect with someone. Uh, and there's news coming your way, and there's the chance to heal and to feel optimistic. And these are very powerful feelings and very powerful um, places to be to be working from for use in July. A little rough spot here of doubting yourself, blocking yourself, but you will rise out of that. You'll, you'll find a way to get out of that. 
So nice cards here, and, and let's get a little more um, guidance. And this is the Soul Trees Oracle. I really like this Oracle deck. And we'll see what is coming out for us. Okay. And this is the card that says resilience. Get that here. That's a beautiful illustration. And resilience is a great word because resilience helps, um, you know, it, it helps guide us and it helps us repair the things that perhaps kind of go off track in our lives. When you have resilience, you know, you just are getting, you might get knocked down, but you're ready to get back up and back in the game and back on track. You know, you appreciate and understand that life has its challenges and that you can uh, rise above those challenges. And to be resilient is to, to cope, is to have really excellent coping ability. With your empathetic nature, and uh, it's just a... a um, I, I would I know so many so resilience I would say is a true true characteristic which is not giving up being determined and uh, you know keeping at focusing on your goals and the life that you want to create and then since we have some a little bit of love and family in this let's pull a love card and this is the whispers of love oracle And they're tough to pull, okay. And this is focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life. So uh, when you recognize and when you appreciate and when you acknowledge all the loving entities in your life, uh, it makes, it fills your heart up. It fills your soul up, and it just really is such a uh, healing force. And again, when you are wanting love, if you're single, if you send those vibes out to the universe, they're, they're going to come back to you. And if you uh, are in a relationship, just remember to be appreciative and to be grateful for what you have. And to uh, tell the person how you feel. Focus on the love, be the love, feel the love. That's what I think the message is in July. So I hope that you enjoyed this reading. If you did, please like and subscribe. It's a great way to stay connected.